that they call you, Mama Nkechi. We found your husband in the gutter at the junction, and you go there with wheelbarrow and pick your husband, and he's like, oh, woman, woman, let me alone. You know those kind of husbands. And we still come back home and demand sex, stinking of alcohol, and even beat you on top of it if you refuse them. Those kinds of behavior. So hello guys. What's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. Today's video will be a masterpiece. Watch it, save it, share it. Whether or not you're going through a divorce, whether or not you will go through a divorce, whether you think you need it now or whether you think you do not need it at all, watch it regardless. I will be revealing very important, priceless information, knowledge of which will be helpful and will empower you. Now get your pen and paper. Let us begin. Now a lot of factors necessitated my decision to create this content. I've always wanted to. Right from the time of the Leto Sinachi and her husband Peter to the Tonto and Churchill saga and now the May and Yule Doche and Judy Austin situation. I have always wanted to enlighten you guys on how issues around these things work. I have read and heard people make several comments born out of harmless ignorance. Comments like, oh, if this happens, I will get a divorce. If my husband does this, I have divorced him. If my wife does this, I will divorce her. And it makes me wonder, do you think the court just grants divorce requests indiscriminately because you asked for it? The law respects and recognizes the sanctity of marriage and have stipulated certain grounds or reasons upon fulfillment of which it would grant a divorce. In today's video, guys, I will be explaining very clearly the grounds for a divorce in Nigeria. It is interesting to note that these laws are very similar amongst several jurisdictions all over the world. So listen very keenly, watch till the end, and do not skip any parts. You'll thank me later. <laughs> So the law would only grant a divorce if it is proven that that marriage has broken down irretrievably. And there are eight factors that would allow the court to come to the conclusion that a marriage has indeed broken down irretrievably. 1. A willful and persistent refusal to consummate the marriage. <laughs> a willful and persistent refusal to consummate <laughs> the marriage. A court would grant a divorce request when one party to a marriage refuses to consummate the marriage. Now you may ask, what is consummation? Because a lot of people have a false idea of what consummation is. Consummation is not the everyday sexual intercourse that a man and wife has. That is not consummation. Consummation is the first act of sexual intercourse after the marriage. I often hear people say, oh, that woman, the woman refused to go to bed with her husband. The man can sue. She refused to consummate the marriage, <laughs> but they have four kids. No, that marriage has very well been consummated. He can't come under this ground. Once a man and a woman has had sex after marriage, that marriage has been consummated. What this ground for divorce means is that since the marriage began, the couple has never had sex because one party is making sure that it doesn't happen. And trust me, these things happen a lot in the society. Maybe due to diabolism, ritualism, due to um, sexual preferences. Yes, <laughs> you see many gay guys, they know their sexual preferences, but they would marry. And when they get into the marriage, they'll refuse to touch their wives. That is an example where this ground can come to play. And note that there are two conditions for this refusal. One is that it must be willful. It must be deliberate. It must not be due to circumstances above that person's control. Like maybe weak erection. A man might be wanting to have sex with his wife, <laughs> but the machine gun is not cooperating. That cannot come under this ground because that was not willful. Or maybe due to ill health, or distance, this makes that refusal 
unwillful. That is on the one hand. On the second hand, the law says that that refusal must be persistent. It must be continuous. It must be repeated. So if after the marriage, someone tries once, twice, and the man or the woman says no, or maybe because of pain for inexperienced people, you now run to court and say this person has refused to consume it, no. That refusal must be persistent. Meaning you have tried and tried and tried and tried for a period of time, and that person has still not budged. So before we go to the next point, I'm going to be highlighting the interesting facts about every point that we discuss. And the interesting part about this ground is that regardless of how many times you both have had sex, even if you guys have been living together and having marathon sex every day, what counts is the first sex after that union becomes official, after marriage. So it's inconsequential how many times you have had sex before the marriage. If the first sex is not had, that marriage has not been consummated. Let's go to the second ground. The second ground for a divorce under the law is adultery and the other person finds it intolerable to live with that adulterer or adulteress. Please note before I go on, you know that Nigeria is a very diverse and funny nation. It is important that I note that this is different from situations under customary law <laughs> for those that did just traditional marriage. The situation is very different because under traditional marriage, a husband is permitted to divorce his wife on account of adultery, but a wife is not permitted to rely on her husband's adultery to seek for a divorce under customary law and traditions. So let us go on. So adultery is recognized by law as a ground for divorce. Adultery being committed on one hand and the fact that that person who has been cheated on finds it intolerable, cannot tolerate living with that person who has cheated on him or her. But please note, you lose a right to come under this ground if you by any way condone that adultery. So if an adultery happened some years ago, you didn't make a fuss about it, you forgave, you accepted it and you continued living together as man and wife, discharging responsibilities, and later on in future you come and say, oh, he committed adultery in 1802. No, you are bad from coming under that ground because you condoned that adultery. An interesting fact about this ground is that the law makes provision for a spouse to sue for damages against the person who committed adultery with his or her spouse. So if Clara slept with Jane's husband, knowing that Jane is married to that man, Jane has a right in law to sue Clara for damages for sleeping with her husband. <laughs> Side chicks wouldn't like this one. Let's go to the next point. The third ground for divorce under the Nigerian law is unreasonable behavior. The law puts it like this, that since the marriage, your spouse has behaved in such a way that it cannot be reasonably expected for you to live with him or her. I'm actually supposed to be using the terminology petitioner and respondent. Petitioner, the person seeking for the divorce and respondent is the person that is being dragged to court, right? But I don't want to confuse you with all those legal terminologies. That is why I'm using your spouse, your spouse, all right? Remember, I promise to keep this as simple and easy to comprehend as possible. So this ground borders on bad behavior. <laughs> intolerable behavior, a behavior that no human being can be expected to put up with. I consider this ground to be the broadest of them all. Other grounds are more definite and, you know, enclosed, but this one accommodates all sorts, from excessive gambling to chronic indebtedness to gross irresponsibility, perpetual drunkenness, cruelty and bestiality, domestic violence and extreme anger issues, even the use of juju, <laughs> even the use of juju and charms can comfortably come under this ground. The list is both broad and inexhaustive. So that spouse that is always getting so drunk that they call you, Mama Nkechi, we found your husband in the gutter at the junction and you go there with wheelbarrow and pick your husband and he's like, oh, woman, woman, let me alone. 
you know those kind of husbands and will still come back home and demand sex stinking of alcohol and even beat you on top of it if you refuse them those kinds of behavior that man that is such a chronic debtor that every day you're coming to get harassed at home your properties are coming to get carted away because your husband is on all the loan apps and all the baba ijebu and baba ijesha borrowing up and down and driving the family to the brink of poverty that is an irresponsible behavior and it can fall under this ground so it's broad a behavior that you cannot be reasonably expected to live with before we move to the next points are interesting facts about this ground now this ground is benchmarked on the concept of reasonability it has to be reasonable and fair to every right thinking person not just your personal preferences so a woman can have a man who snores so loudly and despite it causes her so much distress she cannot come under this ground because the court will consider that behavior as one that can be lived with despite to her in person individually she cannot deal with it but to the courts the court might see that behavior as one that any reasonable person should be able to cope with number four the fourth ground for divorce in nigeria is desertion <laughs> desertion what is desertion abandonment ghosting leaving your spouse according to the law desertion is when one person withdraws cohabitation <laughs> cohabitation is when couple husband and wife live together right when one person withdraws cohabitation in a marriage without just cause and without the consent of the other party that party can be deemed to have been deserted this desertion must have existed up to one year preceding that request for divorce <laughs> let me break it down so the desertion must follow a one year straight period you cannot come and say he deserted me three months ago and came back i accepted him he left again deserted me for five months and came back i accepted him he left again deserted me for 10 months no it must be for a one year straight period or above minimum of one year and it must be the one year preceding the request for that divorce are you following me say yes barista neza in the comment section if you're following me so if your spouse deserted you in 1999 and he came back and you guys fought kissed and had makeup sex <laughs> and 10 years later or five years later or two years later you come back on the ground of desertion and say he deserted me last year no that cannot come under this ground because that is not the one year preceding that request. So if you want to ask for the court for a divorce today, under this ground of desertion, it means that within the last 12 months to 2022, that is when your spouse deserted you. Not long ago, not two years ago. Also, consent nullifies your rights on this ground. So if you and your spouse consent to live in a part, <laughs> Emeka Malay, Nedu Brazil, Ikenna Japan, mm -hmm. you know them. For example, you and your husband agrees that your husband should go abroad to go and hustle while you stay back here to wait for him. And he's been away for years. You cannot claim desertion because that separation was consensual. A very important and indeed funny fact about this ground is that you can be in the same house with somebody living together and on the face cohabition is happening and still be held to have deserted your spouse how possible i would explain desertion are in two types desertion de jure and desertion de facto the jure desertion is desertion according to law that is the actual desertion where somebody packs his or her load and commutes for house <laughs> my wife pack commutes or my husband pack commutes that is desertion de jure according to law it is seen that that person has deserted you but desertion de facto means that even though this person has not deserted you even if that person still resides in the same house with you by their actions you feel deserted and alone it is desertion in practicable terms so when you're living in the same house with your wife and she's giving you the silent treatment she wouldn't talk to you she wouldn't cook for you she wouldn't share a bed with you and that behavior stretches for up to one year the court would hold that you have been deserted and can grant you a request for a divorce under this ground 
<laughs> where are my ladies at? Where are the matters of silent treatment? Can I see your hands in the comment section? This one is for you. All right, guys, at this juncture, we have to bring this particular episode to an end. I do not want this video to stretch too long so I don't lose you guys along the way. There is going to be another part to this video where we're going to continue the grounds. And this other part even has more controversial reasons. Reasons and grounds that will drop your jaws. Don't forget that you can support my channel and the work that I do by subscribing, sharing my video, also keying into my Patreon or PayPal account, or just joining membership on my channel by super thanks or super chats. So tell me your feelings so far on the points that we have listed. Subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up, drop your contributions in the comment section, and stay glued for the second part of this discuss. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. I'll see you guys in my next one for now.